Good morning and welcome to the Anthony Petiti Organic Gardening Show. Thank you so much for getting up early. Here we are at the end of August. How can this be? Our last Saturday of August and we're all getting ready here in Stark County for the Stark County Fair or at least my whole world is getting ready for the Stark County Fair. And um, we would love for you to come out and and visit us. But we will be talking about that throughout our show today, as well as answering the questions that many of you are having right now. So we're going to go ahead and get our show opened up with a word of prayer. Father, we just come before you thanking you, Father, for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Father, we just thank you for all of our blessings. We just ask that you use our show to help us Teach others how to take care of the things that you have given us naturally the way you intended. Father, just give us wisdom and just help us and remind us to seek your wisdom, Father, in everything, in every single thing that we say and do. We just love you, Father. We just thank you. In Jesus' name. Well, we are getting ready for the Stark County Fair and um, in the agricultural world that I live in. Um, if you've been around the Stark County Fairgrounds in Canton on Wurtz, you will see um, it's a busy little bees around there. We're all getting ready, working and working. Um, the fair opens on Tuesday and we would love all of you to um, come over to the fair and visit us. And um, actually, um, I have two tickets So the first person that comes into my store today, Monday, um, or Tuesday morning, if nobody comes in on today or on Monday, um, you can pick up a pair of tickets. Um, It's good for uh, one day, one admission, two tickets though. So two of you can get into the fair and spend the whole entire day at the fair for free. Um, So it will get you in, get you um, all of the pavilion entertainment, um, all of the animals, everything like that. The only thing, if you wanted to go to a show in the grandstands, it is a paid show, um, you would have to pay for that. But besides that, you can get into the fair free. So those tickets will be at the register and the first person that comes in and ask for those tickets say I heard Cindy on the radio on Saturday morning um, and she had two tickets to give away you come in and we're going to give you those tickets so we're excited about that we want as many people as we can to come to the fair to see all of the hard work um, that everyone's done um, in the art hall. Um, it was it's been amazing. Uh, Tim has everything up at the art hall already because all of those entries had to be in early so that they could be judged and then put on display for all of you to visit and see. Um, Heidi and I have been busy in the Grange Horticulture Building, uh, cleaning and scrubbing um, and getting everything ready because Monday is take-in um, for all of those competitions. So if you have um, entered vegetables or your canned goods or maybe your honey products, um, Monday is when you're going to be bringing all of those over to the fairgrounds so that we can get them set up, get you tagged in, um, get everything on display so that everything can be judged on Tuesday morning over there. So we're looking forward to all of that. And we are offering some fair specials at our store. And um, we would love for all of you to come on over and see that. We are also on fair schedule. So during the fair, um, the store has some special hours just because I'm not at the store. I am at the fair the whole week. And so starting on Monday... Um, We will have special hours, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, and then regular hours on Saturday, 8 to 4. Um, But we will be closing an hour early um, so that um, our staff has time to do the extra things that I normally do at the end of the day. Um, They're going to be taking that on. So please be um, patient with them if you go over to the store and they don't have an answer for something. Uh, They um, are covering for me, um, actually, even today. I won't be at the store much today either. Um, But from now um, until uh, Wednesday, actually the 8th, will I be back in the store a lot. Um, We are closed on Labor Day. Um, So just wanted to make sure that everybody remembers that we will not be open at all on Labor Day. And and then um, we will resume regular hours on 
on the 7th, um, but we won't um, we won't be um, open on Monday the eight, or on Labor Day. So we have had um, a lot of questions um, that uh, many of you have been asking. Um, uh, you know, the weather, uh, the hot, the humid, and then lots of rain. Um, we have had um, a lot of issues. Um, so uh, Sarah had a question about her peppers. She said her peppers were starting to turn red. Um, it was a California wonder. So once they're red, they are really ripe and ready to be harvested for sure. And she uh, harvested all of them. And she noticed that a couple of them had a little teeny soft brown spot on them. And she wondered what that could be. So uh, that could be a couple different things. It could be some sun scald that could have started early on and um, it could just is too hot and um, Sarah actually is a container planter and her back porch um, faces west so this is very possible for her the heat reflecting off of the brick of her house and it could really um, cause some you know excess heat so that could be it or it could be that they're just a little overripe so those spots you're just going to need to cut out and you can go ahead and eat the pepper the pepper is going to be fine it's not like it's bad um, just that spot you're probably not going to want to eat um, or can or whatever you're doing but if you do start to get those little spots you usually will know that it is because it's overripe or maybe it got a little bit of sun scald that will happen on those. Um, did want to let everyone know that we did get in a shipment of perennials from North Coast Perennial. Um, we got those in on Wednesday and then we got a new shipment of landscape plants in on Thursday. So if you are um, ready to do some landscaping as fall comes on or maybe this weekend uh, you have some free time and you've been waiting for something, uh, we got the hydrangeas in, we got dogwood trees in, um, boxwoods, some beautiful knockout roses and drift roses. Um, and and so a lot of you um, have been asking for those things. And that has been a question that we have. We got this great shipment in, but a lot of you have been asking, can I still plant? And and I guess the, the biggest question is, are fruit trees? Can I still plant fruit trees? You can if you can find fruit trees. Most of us are pretty close to being out of fruit trees. I think we have a couple cherry trees left. Um, they're like pie cherries, the sour variety. Um, but, you know, you can... St- always plant. You can plant in the middle of the summer when it's hot out as long as you're going to be home to make sure that the plants get watered. That is the key thing is making sure that the plant is watered correctly. And so if you are planting perennials right now or a tree or a shrub or maybe you're planting a blueberry bush or an elderberry bush um, or a fruit tree, the, the key thing is making sure that you are going to be home to water it. You know, this isn't the time to plant and then leave for a two-week vacation. So you just want to make sure you follow everything that you would any other time. You know, you dig your hole a little bigger, um, deeper, and wider than it needs to be. You put some nice, loose compost in the bottom so that the plant, when it's sitting in there outside of the pot and it's sitting in the hole, it sits two inches above grade. Then you pack in your soil um, mixed with some compost so that you have some good organic matter and nutrients down in there. You make sure that there's no air pockets. You pack it in there and then you slope the soil away from the plant um, uh, into the grade and so that water never settles at the base of your plant. It always flows away so it'll be at the drip line of the plant, not at the base of it. And then when you water, you're going to water um, a lot that first week. Um, if it's ra- if it's really dry and hot and you're and we're not getting rain, um, the first week you should water every day or every other day depending on the heat. And then um, the next week go to every three days. And you water a lot, but you water less frequently. 
And that's going to teach that root system to go deep because you don't want the root system to stay at the surface. If you water just a little bit every single day for weeks and weeks and weeks, that root system is going to come to the surface where the water is instead of going deep to catch the water. So it's much better to water heavy and not water as often. So every other day that first week, if you're doing grass, you're going to water every day. But plants, um, every other day is usually good as long as you're watering heavy. And then go to th every three days, then every four days, um, and then every five days. And then once a week um, for, you know, another couple weeks. And by that time, we will be into fall enough that the temperatures will be cooler and you won't have to be watering because we will be into the fall. But you want to make sure that you are treating the plant like that. So you can water or plant now. Just make sure that you're watering. Or you can wait a few weeks, maybe into late September. And then you're still going to start off watering like every other day. But we get more rain usually in the fall. So a lot of times you get to skip a day because we have a lot. Now, if we have just a little shower, remember that's not enough to penetrate. You need some real heavy rain to be able to call that as one of your waterings and that you get to skip. So you want to make sure um, that you're doing that. But um, if you are looking for some beautiful shrubbery, um, like I said, we got this great shipment in. Those roses were beautiful. The hydrangeas are beautiful. We got some beautiful um, hibiscus in, the perennial variety, and then also the one that most people know as a Rosa Sharon, and all still in full bloom, um, looking very, very great. Now, if you are looking for something to plant that's going to be blooming next spring, we got forsythia in. They are one of those first bloomers early in April with that bright, beautiful yellow flower. We got the forsythia in. We got rhododendrons and azaleas. And we also got something that's been requested um, recently is the new miniature hostas. And it's called mouse ear. And it's a tiny little hosta. So if you um, are one of those people that love hostas and you're trying to collect all of those different varieties to plant in a perennial bed, um, we got that new one in. So it's very, very interesting. Um, such a tiny little plant, um, but very, very interesting. So we invite you to come on over and um, check all of those new plants out. The beautiful hydrangea trees are in still in full bloom that limelight is just an elegant one uh, it's a wonderful tree um, for the for your landscape you know in your foundation planting but also works out very well in an island bed um, as a vocal point in your landscape it's very very beautiful well we are getting ready for a short break um, and we're going to hear from our sponsors habitat for humanity and bull country compost remember putting that bull country compost in with every Every single tree and shrub and perennial flower that you plant, you are always going to have better success. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, thank you so much for staying with us. And thank you to Bull Country Compost and Habitat for Humanity Restore for sponsoring our show each and every week. So we have a couple more um, questions that we want to answer. Um, someone wanted to know if they should be fertilizing their cold crops. And yes, definitely. Your cold crops um, that you are starting right now for a fall harvest definitely still need nutrients. And especially now, we've been getting quite a bit of rain, so the nutrients are leaching out of the soil. Um, and even though it will be cooling off in the next few weeks, right now it is still um, very hot. So if you are watering or if we are like we had a couple days this week of some really hard rains, um, a lot of those nutrients are being leached out of the soil or out of your containers. So you do want to continue um, to fertilize them and to keep them healthy. Like your tomatoes still, you want them to continue to produce flour and to produce tomatoes. So you want to keep uh, fertilizing them with your tomato tone or your tomato maker. Um, it's going to keep them going. Now, even if you used Hybrix and it's um, known for a one and done, um, I, like I said earlier in the season, um, usually once at the beginning of the season and once I think midway through, um, is always a good idea, especially if we've had a lot of rain throughout the season. Um, adding that extra 
application is going to help your harvest. So you might want to go ahead, if you haven't yet, um, even if you have done high bricks, is to go ahead and use that. Remember um, a few weeks back, we talked about the high bricks fertilizer and the wonderful success many growers are having using it, um, not having the issues with insects and diseases um, that a lot of us battle. So um, I think a lot of us are going to be trying the high bricks next year that haven't used it um, too much um, in the past. We're we're all going to be trying it on more things than we have. Um, But definitely um, still your lettuce um, can be, um, you know, give them a little bit of boost by fertilizing them. Your garden tone is going to what you'll be using on your lettuce, your cabbage, your broccoli, your cauliflower. All of those things um, is what you're going to use. But remember your viners and your tomatoes, tomato tone, because it has that additional calcium and magnesium um, that you need so that you don't get blossom end rot. And that's always going to help you so, so much. Um, The next question that we had um, was about uh, trees. And um, this customer came in, actually she wanted to buy some peaches, and she said she had had old peach trees. Um, they had gotten too bad and too old, so she had them cut down. Stumps ground out, they brought in soil, but now she has these mushrooms growing all over the place, and she wondered why. She never had them before. So what happens a lot of times is when the stump gets ground out, all of that grinding stays in the soil unless you rake it and shovel it all out. As that wood is decomposing with the soil that was put on so that you could have a new lawn, it starts decomposing, adds acidity to the soil. When we are having a lot of rain and a lot of humidity, that is the perfect scenario for growing mushrooms. And so what is happening is the mushrooms start growing. So that usually the pH is off. Um, It's very acidic as that stuff starts to decompose. So adding lime to the soil is going to definitely change that pH so that in the future you won't have as many. But if you want to kill off the mushrooms right now, because these are like a fungi, they're not like a mushroom that you're going to eat, um, you can put down Moss Max, which is an organic product. Um, You can put down the Moss Max. It will kill the mushrooms that's growing right now, then you put down the lime and that's going to change the pH so that you don't have them in the future. If you do have this issue and it hasn't been too long, you probably very soon will notice that you're going, you're having some settling and it's going to keep on as those wood chips decompose, things are going to settle and you're going to need more soil. So when you, to, for I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but if you could go back and when in the future you have any tree cut down, getting as many of those chips out of the hole after the stump has been ground out, as much as you can get that out and then replace it all with good topsoil and always mound it high so that when you, everything settles, you're still at grade it's going to be much better for you and you're not going to have those mushroom issues like you do um, if you don't get all of those things out. And I know it's a lot of times, you know, a company comes in, they do the stump grinding for you and you say, oh, it's okay. You know, whatever you got out, okay, I'm going to bring in soil and overseed. Sometimes it's better to pay that company an additional amount to make sure that they get all of those grindings out for you because that really is a lot of work to um, get all of those grindings out of that hole and then have topsoil brought in, um, dumped there, you can put it in and then your process can go on from there, seeding or maybe at that time you decide it's time for another tree. And so you can always do that too if that stump was ground out completely. But you still want to make sure that you're adding good soil. Um, You don't want that new tree, if you put a new tree in there, to settle. Um, And then it would be too deep like we were talking earlier. You always want to make sure that that tree is planted high. So in any case, there's always going to be a few 
of those grindings left. If you do plant another tree in that hole, make sure that you plant especially high, more than the two inches recommended, so that as it settles, it still will stay above grade and you don't have those issues to worry about. Well, I want to remind everyone about all of the farmer's markets um, that are coming up um, or going on. Um, remember, Wednesday nights, we have the Tuscarawas County Farmer's Market um, at the fairgrounds, um, and we have the North Canton Farmer's Market in the Kmart parking lot. Um, on Saturdays this morning, you can um, head to the Canton Farmer's Market, downtown Canton. Um, the Alliance Farmer's Market is going on also. Uh, remember, on the second and fourth Friday nights of each month, last night was Louisville's, um, is the Louisville Farmer's Market in downtown Market Days. So um, that is always on the second and the fourth Friday night of the month. And, um, and then also remember Jackson Township has theirs on Thursday night. So there's always great markets to be going to. Also the Fichter Farm, uh, you can go on to their Facebook page or email them and you can place an order each week and you can actually pick up at our place or you can um, pick up at their farm. So that's always another option. You know, this time of year, lots of harvesters um, are coming in. You know, you're harvesting beans and tomatoes and cucumbers and everybody's harvesting cucumbers right now um, remember if you need some dill to make dill pickles come on over to the store and get fresh dill so that you can make dill pickles um, there's so many things that you can do but you know so many things are coming on right now um, in your gardens and maybe you're something didn't do well or you don't plant um, all of those uh, vendors those, those farmers at the farmers markets has what you need so head on over there to them and they will be able to get all of the things that you need. Now, we want to remind everyone about the Homesteading Sustainable Farm Workshop that we are planning. Um, we have had some feedback um, from our radio listeners or ones that you have shared it to um, and people coming into the store. Remember, if you are interested in in taking, um, ha doing the workshop, participating as a participant in the workshop for the homesteading and sustainable farm uh, class, we would love you to come in um, or call us and sign up so that we know how many people that we're planning for. And then we can set down and pinpoint a date um, that's going to be best for all of the folks teaching the classes and all the ones that want to attend to learn more about it. So we're very excited about that and really want um, before winter to share um, this knowledge and then maybe during the winter um, come back together, share what we've learned, um, our experiences, and how things are going. So we really want to um, get that rolling and do that sometime in the very near future. So if you are interested, make sure that you give us a call um, about that. We want to make sure that you're all there. Well, I, again, want to invite all of you to the Stark County Fair. Um, it starts on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday evening is the band show. So if you love high school bands, uh, you can come over on Tuesday evening and hear many, many local high school bands uh, performing. It's going to be an evening full of that. And that is going to be so much fun. And that's going to be in the grandstands. In the pavilion, we will be having opening ceremony. And then we will be doing things with Junior Fair, crowning our king and queen, um, announcing our scholarship winners. So in the pavilion, there'll be things going on and um, in the grandstands will be the high school local high school bands um, on Wednesday night then we have um, Mitchell Tenpenny um, a southern rock country performer he will be performing in the grandstands at eight o'clock um, on Thursday night we have Justin Moore um, a very popular country artist. Um, on Friday night and Saturday night, we will have the tractor pulls. Um, and that's going to be very exciting. Um, and um, we... All of us in, you know, in the agriculture industry, we all love tractor pulls. So we invite you to come out. Um, and, you know, if you get those uh, tickets uh, from me, um, you can come out and then go into the grandstands and watch those tractor pulls. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Then on Sunday night uh, will be a demolition derby. And then on Monday afternoon, a second demolition derby. We all love demolition derbies, too. It just seems like everyone loves a derby. It always draws a great big crowd. It's so 
much fun to watch people crash cars. It's just a, it's a blessing and so much fun uh, to get to have this this wonderful event. Um, if you are um, wanting to come to the fair, but you're concerned with COVID, um, we do have masks available um, at the gates. So um, you don't if you don't bring your own um, and you you're concerned because we have lots of crowds, um, we do have them at every ticket booth as you're um, after you park you can come up to the ticket booth and we will give you masks to wear hand sanitizing stations are set up everywhere around the fairgrounds they're already set up they set them up throughout the week Um, hand washing stations hand sanitizing stations Um, we have a first aid station um, outside of the art hall so there's just everything that you need to feel comfortable and safe Um, we have um, our dedicated police force um, and our sheriff's office that will be there for your protection as well Um, it's going to be a wonderful wonderful event and we would love to have all of you come out and visit us at the Stark County Fair. You can call the fair office if you have questions um, or you can call me at the store. I will um, be at the store um, throughout uh, the weekend here and on Monday but if I don't um, if I'm not at the store um, the um, anyone at our off or our store knows how to get a hold of me if you have questions or you can call the fair office um, directly at 330-452-0621 well I appreciate you all staying with us throughout the show talking about the fair and so much going on Uh, we will be back with you um, next week right here um, on 95.9 the light and hopefully we'll have updated information on what's going on at the fair I invite you to come out have a wonderful blessed week thank you